uh, thanks all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, we're doing uh, presents, or we're doing. I'm not doing. Uh, this is on. Uh, how to build an online presence as real estate agents. And if you're not a real estate agent, this will, most of the content will still apply to you. Yeah. yeah. Piece of cake. All right, so give her your full attention would be awesome. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you, Corey, oh, for, he invited me to come here um, just to share a little bit of my knowledge with you guys. It, it is. It's a long walk from my office. So I'm obviously here all the time. I run a space here, so um, we've got to know each other well. I've worked with Cherie. Um, we created some really cool content for her in a website, um, and she's taught me a lot about the real estate side along the way, so it's been a fun opportunity. So anyway, I'm glad to he be here, and if you guys have questions along the way, just feel free to, you know, speak up and ask questions, and we'll just kind of go through it together. Um, what I created today is I wanted to bring up a few really good points that I feel is going to be really beneficial for you guys as real estate agents. Um, we're going to talk about how to get found on Google, creating a social media presence, creating a lead magnet or a website to capture leads or a landing page, um, how to create some really cool marketing material and um, getting set up for success. So a little bit about me, I'm Casey. Um, I'm a digital marketer. I've worked with multi-million dollar companies, creating affiliate programs, um, running product launches, and I've been on the top leaderboards for different um, affiliate programs and on the Legendary Marketer um, Morning Show. So you probably don't know what that is, but in the real, in the affiliate marketing world, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, why I'm here and how I'm going to help you guys is, like I said, teach you how to get a presence on Google, create a social media presence that's unique to you guys because not every platform is going to be the right platform for you um, and just help you kind of get a presence out there. And not only that, but learn how to like maintain your presence and be in control of whatever you're doing and creating. And also I have something I wanted to share on how to, how to provide you guys with like a killer giveaway for your clients when you close deals, um, a product that is really, really good for real estate agents that you may or may not have already heard of. Did everybody get in? Yeah, did everyone get the ebook? Okay, cool. And I'll explain why I had you guys do it that way um, in one of these upcoming set sections because um, I'm using this as an example of how I think it'll really benefit you guys doing the same kind of concept. So the first one, um, creating a Google business profile. Is anyone already doing this? Is anyone actually already on Google? If you go to Google map, um, have you guys looked? Yeah. You are? Okay. Your team. Uh, what about as like individual real estate agents? Have any of you guys actually considered being found on Google or on Google maps? Okay. That's fine being if I do that. I mean, <laughs> it, not if you use this address. <laughs> So I'm gonna just kind of pull out of the presentation, um, if I don't mess it up, and walk you through how simple it is. Okay, always so much smaller. So this is what I pulled today. When I, you go onto Google Maps, you can see like, I know it's really tiny, I wonder if I can zoom in. Let's get over. You can see that there's like a ton of real estate offices that are actually ranking on here. You can see that some are running ads to it and some have reviews, but there's a lot that don't and there's not any like real estate agents on here. The only one that I was able to find is Caitlin over here and she has five. <laughs> you could tell, you know, she's she's younger. She's she's getting those testimonies on here, which is great. She's building rapport. And, you know, for someone who's new to the area that might be looking for a real estate agent and they just happen to be on here, I don't know about you, but that would probably be my pick, at least someone to reach out to because she's there, she's present, um, and I could already instantly read the reviews. So I think it's really important for you guys to be on here and creating a profile. So... Um, to create a profile, it's it's super simple. It'll take you less than 30 minutes. You basically just go to google.com slash business and you can sign in or sign up. And you'll it'll walk you through like a variety of questions. Hold on, I don't want to be in here yet. 
If she pays for advertising, can she be higher on the list? Because she's like way down there. If she did, she would be by the top. Because I know me, I wouldn't scroll all the way down to the mm -hmm. or like a single person to talk to. I feel right. Like the, the, the best reviews, obviously. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, definitely reviews, I think, make a big impact on the person looking at it. Um, but also what they're looking for. You could see that there was a ton of real estate agents or not real estate offices that had reviews and stuff, but it wasn't as personable as finding someone with their actual face right. and their content. Um, it's not going to let me walk back through. I tested this out yesterday to kind of walk walk you through the process, but I think because I already did it, it's not gonna let me show you, but that's okay. We'll just kind of go through this. So basically there's a series of about five questions that you'll walk through. It'll just ask you like your name. You could do like for me, I, when I tested it, I put in Casey Jensen and then slash real estate agent. You want to have like those keywords that people are gonna look up. They're not gonna know your name right away. So you're gonna wanna do like real estate agent or if you're a broker, um, do those keywords that are relevant to what you're offering. Um, and then it'll give you an option to do location. So you'll enter just those basic information. And then when you answer those questions, it'll bring you to a managing profile like this, where it'll show you like you're 30% done. So then you'll enter like your hours. Yeah, you want me to blow it up? Yeah, you blind eyes sitting in the back. Just kidding. So like here, you can see the profile where it wants you to add your contact information, the description, your hours of operation. You can also add in um, your website. If you don't already have a website, we're gonna touch base on that soon. But all of you should have a website in KB Core and hopefully if you're not utilizing it, you'll utilize it after today. Um, so after you set this up, you have kind of two options with the address. You can use the address of the office and it also kind of depends on your MLS. Sometimes they're gonna require you to use your office address or you can use a different address. Um, you can also use Google Maps and do a broad area. It doesn't have to just be targeting ording. Um, maybe if you're just wanting to target Tacoma or some of the surrounding areas, you have that availability to, to have a broad search to show up in multiple different places. Um, and another important part with this is this is a great way to get reviews. It's really simple when you're finishing a deal and you have a happy client is to just ask them for that review in that moment. And um, with Google, you can download an app and it'll instantly create like an email or a text that you can send them and then they have instant access to put that review right on there. So there's different ways you can do it. You can send it through email and then you have the opportunity to um, reiterate all the things that you helped them do during that transaction. So instead of just getting a review that says working with Corey was great, you could get a review. Corey helped me with X, Y, and Z and the full review that, you know, that they thought of you. Casey, is there a way to, like, if you have, like, I don't know that you can integ integrate those reviews into this, but you can take your reviews off of this and put them on other platforms. Like your, you can put them right into KV Core in the testimony section. You can put them on a, a website. You can put them periodically in your social media content. But um, with Zillow, I'm not sure. Um, is there any questions about this specific topic? Do they, uh, how, how does Google verify the review? So that, I'm glad you brought that up. So they verify the the testimony. Right. Well, the, the reviewer. Okay. The um, they don't. They they don't verify it. It's just once it's up there, it's up there forever. Um, but how, since you brought up verification, how they verify you with your Google profile is once you set this up, it'll take about five days to get it back. Um, it'll they'll send you a code to the address that you entered, and then you'll enter that code in your back office, and then that's when it'll actually go live. So even if you create it and you're not ready for it to go public yet, um, you have a little bit of that time to finish setting it up before everyone can actually see it. They do. Mm -hmm. It feels like it took forever. Yeah. If you make any changes at all, I mean, your address change or anything, you will get another code. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It used to take a lot longer, too. Like, I think it used to take almost two weeks. 
but um, now it's not as not as long. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is creating social media presence, and this one could honestly be a whole day worth of training in itself. So we're just going to cover some some of the topics here. I'll zoom in. I'm not going to do that. Um, and like you can't see, I, that's why I sent you the ebook too, so you can read the ebook as we go along too. Um, different platforms based off of your personality. Um, there's some of the really popular ones like TikTok and those video form content are really trendy right now. Um, is anyone actively already promoting on social media? You are. What? Which platform? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyone else on social? Yeah, you run the Facebook page. You have Facebook page and um, TikTok and all those are really good platforms to be on. Um, okay. Right. Okay, so when you're thinking about content too, um, like I said, TikTok, Facebook, um, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram are all really popular ones. And when you're thinking of the content that you wanna create for them, I think that's the hardest part for content creators and influencers. Not only is it kind of frightening to get in front of a camera and show your face, but it's also like, okay, well, well what the heck do I have to say? Well, like, what do people wanna know? So um, here are some questions that can help um, give you some ideas of what to post. like. Um, the most important person to think of is the viewer. Think about who you are trying to speak to. Are they an investor, a first time home buyer? Um, do they have a family? What are their struggles and challenges that they're facing? And then focus on creating educational content to, um, to address those struggles. And um, you can also go live when you're doing home tours and do Q&As, even if you're at home and you're talking about a property or you just want to do a Q&A with people. If you're on Instagram or TikTok, you can go live and just answer questions related to first-time home buyers or target those. You can do live events and have them scheduled where people can register, even if they're small ones. You know, you, a lot of this doesn't have to be overthought or put too much time and effort in overthinking it. Just like have fun with it. And um, if you can't think of other content ideas, you can go to answerthepublic.com. This is a power, powerful um, site that allows you to get ideas about what's already trending, what people are already looking at, um, and what questions are being asked on Google right now. Um, and I wanted to walk you through, I guess I should look up here because it's so much bigger, <laughs> um, two examples. The first example I wanted to give was on Facebook, and then we're gonna do Instagram. When you're thinking of Facebook, um, what I would recommend for you guys is creating like a Facebook page. This will allow you guys to show your listings, also brand yourself and allow people to get to know you. Um, and it gives you more variety of content you can post instead of just like video form content. Does that have to be a business page or can it be a personal page? Um, I would do a business page because then you can, can run adds to it later on if you want to. Um, but it's ultimately up to you and what you prefer and where you want your audience to be. So I noticed this. Mm -hmm. um, are you using your personal page and making yourself a group as a business? What I do is I do have a private group for my for, for me, it's affiliate marketing, so I have a private group for people that are interested where they get free exclusive training from me for joining that group and having that private group also allows me to easily collect those leads through um, a lead generation called lead groups where automatically if they want to be in that group, they have to enter their email and then it automatically gets put into an autoresponder where I can target them later. Um, it's a little different with the Facebook group and I don't really feel like you guys would need a private group unless your content is more geared around educating maybe other realtors or brokers and doing that kind of content. So more of, so your, more of your yeah, more so of training. I would, yeah, I would do like a face, like a Facebook page for what you're doing. And um, I wanted to use, where is it? How uh, was it? Christina. 
Christi this Christina as an example because she happens to be just 24 miles away. And so this is her Facebook page and you can see she has like the book with me now. She has, yeah, yeah. Is that your phone screen that's on there? No, that, this is my, my laptop. Is that better? Okay. So this is her Facebook page. You can see she has like the book now. She already is getting reviews on here. She's using like keyword research. So people instantly know she's a real estate agent. She has her, um, her, uh, I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, her handle. handle, thank you. <laughs> yeah, her handle. And the cool thing about this is when you're creating your handles, you should make them all kind of the same. If you're on different platforms, if you can make your handles all the same and with the photos, make the photos the same on all the handles. So people instantly recognize you on different platforms and they're not guessing is that her or it's a different picture. Um, it, it makes it coherent and a lot easier. Um, you can see how with Facebook pages, you can actually add in like this option where they can immediately Facebook message you and there's already pre-made questions that they might have but don't know how to write, word it or whatever and they can just hit ask and they'll instantly ask that question and go directly to your phone, which is pretty cool. And then with her content, um, it's not just all about like what houses are on the market. She's saying, you know, congratulating a happy sell, um, talking about what's hot on the market. So is that all stuff that she has to put on there herself or is there a system that can do it on that? Um, she could schedule it herself where she wants to schedule post in advance. She could do all her post for the month, but then if you get new listings, like you guys do on a regular basis, that might be an opportunity where you have to go in and do that the day of if you want it to be up to date. But for the most part, if you already have a lot of your content already pre-planned, then you can schedule it ahead of time and not have to get on Facebook and do it every single day. You can create your your posts and material on Canva, and we'll talk about Canva in another slide. But as far as creating it, yeah, you can create it on Facebook. You can create it on Canva, um, however you see fit, or just you know do do real simple picture or video, like we talked about. Even in um, the KV Core training for those that weren't here, we talked about video form a lot, and it's the same concept when you're adding it to Facebook or any other platform. Um, video form is is going to be one of your best friends, and even though it's scary, you, sh you should definitely consider getting um, start creating that content. Instagram and Facebook together. So mm -hmm. post on Instagram, you automatically get Facebook. Yeah. Yep. And there's <laughs> yes, yeah. And there's different platforms that do exactly that, where you can um, oops, you can schedule the posts to go on multiple different platforms. So you don't have to go. Yep. Yeah. So we can get that on one source and shoot it to all of them. We don't have to do it again. Yeah, they make. There are those platforms. I don't currently use them, but there are, a lot of people do. I know. I know how to schedule a post to read on Facebook and mm -hmm. take it to the schedule and put the date in. Yeah. I, I want to schedule everything. Yeah, you could do that. There's definitely sites that make that easy. So this is the business page, correct? So like mm -hmm. if we were going to go on a Facebook, like a brand new yeah. account or whatever, we, this is a business page where you can link your calendar and yes. do all those sort of Yep, and you'd make this in your personal profile and you'd just create a page, a business page. So you create it out of your personal mm -hmm. profile. Not yes, just as a whole because, thing. right, because you'll be the admin of it and you can add more admin, but it, it'll be under your personal profile. So you have to have a personal profile before you have a business profile. Mm -hmm. You can't just do the business page, Facebook won't let you. Right. <laughs> And probably not, probably not. And that's just, that's, well, yeah. Um, and if you're in Facebook jail, you can also get in Facebook jail when you run ads and you're not complying about something. Um, that's an, that's another way, but I don't imagine it'll be as easy as a real estate agent 
for affiliate marketers, uh, Facebook gel is a very, very common thing when you're running ads. But for example, like you can run an ad to any of this. Like if she wanted to run an ad to this new listing she just did, she could, she could run an ad directly to this. She could target, um, Facebook has a great, um, ad agency and it just targets whatever you whatever you want it to whatever type of person their location what they've been interested in how old they are, are they married how much they make there's so much you could do um, running Facebook ads to target and then you can also retarget I think they cover that a little bit in KB core about like the CRM and Google and retargeting those people that already know you so the content that they already see of yours, you can retarget them at another time and let them see your content again and again, and it helps them build trust and then eventually want to work with you. Our physical tip, you guys, when you yeah. put any, any listing up there, you need to have an MLS number. Mm -hmm. Always. Yep, you got to make sure you're being compliant, especially with yeah. Facebook, because they'll shut you down very yeah. quickly. <laughs> we have to uh, pick our, our target audience pretty vaguely. For, you, yes, for you guys, yeah, it's a little different. So as a realtor, you can still pick the age group and the demographics and stuff? Because we sure as hell can't because it'll mix it in our We can do demographics. Yeah, I even, haven't seen that come up yet. But. Wow. Yeah, even if you don't want to target that, you could start with um, just to get engagement on your page. You could start with an easy likes campaign, um, comment campaign, or getting clicks different campaigns just to get your page out there. <laughs> All right. For the, okay. So, so when you have a brand new Facebook page, for example, and there's no traffic going toward it at all, and you're not, you know, inviting people to like that page as an alternative, if you're like, I don't want to invite my friends on Facebook to like it yet when there's nothing on it and there's no traffic, nothing, you can run small ad campaigns that will get people to like your page, like on top. Let me find it. Um... I don't see it. <laughs> Pretty much, but you can do it for really cheap. Um, so, you know, it makes you look a little bit more professional when there's already something up there. If it's comments, if it's likes, if it's clicks, if you want them to click it. Um, there's different ways to run ads that are inexpensive just to get your page seen and start building that presence and followers like on there. And, and don't put a price in there because you will go to Facebook sale mm -hmm. by putting Put it in there, you gotta put it in the comments. Yeah. So yep. Then you put the price in the comments. I wouldn't even put the because if you right. want them to comment, <coughs> but you don't yeah, what does she do? Even if you're not running ads, like I've never run an ad to a real estate, will it do that? Even if you're not running an ad, if you're just posting, yes. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, she didn't put she didn't put the price on here too. So that yeah, I mean that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any more questions about Facebook before I move on to TikTok? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it depends. Um, I've ran more traffic on Facebook than I have on Google Ads, so I'm more comfortable explaining this. But I think having both is, is good, especially if you have that Google business profile already created and you have that presence. Um, I would say do both and then test it and see which one works better. Okay. So is this something that we could hire somebody like you to run on that for us? Or for Facebook? I, yeah. Is this something each individual can do? Um, yeah, it would be a, a long class, but that's definitely something that we could do. I mean, it's in, in part of it too, I don't know the compliance level as a real estate agent when I, with each topic and each niche you're in is different. So, you know, definitely check out the compliance to make sure 
everyone's being compliant and those details. But as far as running it, once you know how to, you know, get your Facebook ads manager set up, it becomes really repetitive um, doing the same thing and testing out which ads are performing well, which pictures, which headlines um, are performing well. But yeah. My discounts. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You're funny. Hey, uh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh -huh. We just hire you to do this stuff. <laughs> maybe. I thought there was a question that Jennifer seemed to stick around with this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with running ads on social media. So, I mean, if that's what you need me for, I'm happy. Um, it, it, is anyone on TikTok? Do you have the app? Do you use it? Yeah, it's it's pretty addicting, right? <laughs> exactly. Are any of you except for, except for? I know he needs to get on it. Are you guys posting anything about your business on it yet? We we attempted. You attempted. <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. Um, do you, for on the loan side, you have. Do you use your KV Core website in the bio? What do you do? You direct people to any type of call to action or website? So on my realtor profile, mm -hmm. I do have one. I do have my uh, website in the bio, but I have a different one for me. I don't know if it's just because I just think it's where it sounds. Mm -hmm. but I just, I'm not going to put a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, and that's. You jump off a roof into a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of different ways to make that content. And, you know, getting content that speaks to a specific type of buyer. Um, when I was searching on TikTok to give you guys some examples of like real estate content, I found a lot of real estate content that was for real estate agents. And if that's your market, that's great. But if for you guys, I'm pretty sure all of you are wanting to speak to those buyers, those sellers, and make those transactions. Um, and so one way to do that and get ideas if you're thinking about marketing on TikTok is just to go up to the search bar and type in some keywords. Like I typed in first time home buyer just to see what would pop up. And you can see that there's a ton of options that this would be the type of content that you would probably want to make to to uh for your clients um and with with tiktok too you can also run ads through tiktok and they actually just updated their ads so it's a lot more similar to facebook where you have a, a bit a broader um, range of different tools that you can market to and um, really get your ideal client so with tiktok does it does it work like facebook the more likes and and, and stuff that you get or attention that you get Mm -hmm. They bring you up to the top and you're going to show more? Um, kind of with your views. So when you first create your TikTok profile, uh, the algorithm is learning you, learning your behavior, learning what your likes are. It, the same goes for the viewer watching your content. Um, the You want to grab their attention in the first like second, literally the first second. So when you're holding your phone up and you're creating a video, you want like your face to be right here in the middle of the screen. So you have room at the top where you can leave room for your your caption, something that's going to grab their attention. Um, sort of like copy and paste and stuff on your videos. Like we get a lot of traffic if we like paste it ourselves and smack and Chris Rock in the face. Hey, you do whatever you want, yeah. Uh-huh. So you would recommend to make it kind of a fun thing because yeah. I think on TikTok you can uh, I think there's a spot there where you can say, don't like this. You know what I mean? If it sounds like an ad, everyone's probably going to get it. Oh, that. yeah, you could skip an ad. Guess, yeah, and you don't have to run ads on this either. Um, and yes, you're right. The Creating content that's actually fun and engaging, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a social platform. So, you know, getting people entertained, but also TikTok is really good for it, education too. So there is that educational platform. Um, you know, one way to find those videos too is just to see which videos are trending. You can see up here when you're on your phone, you can actually go to settings and you can, um, here, hold on. You can, you can target the videos that are trending for this week. 
I know, that was an odd moment. Yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, here, let me turn up the sound so you can really get a hear for it. She, this video, um, even though it's silly, she did really well and she got a ton of likes and a ton of traffic from it. So this is what I mean, like, be, be silly. You see, this is an example where she's not speaking, but she's using the captions to say what she wants to say. Wow. Wow. Yes. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you sure? Why not? You want to go viral or not? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you, you, you can do anywhere from like a second long to all the way. I think they changed it to up to 10 minutes now. Um, yeah, but but when you're do, but it can be as short as long as you want it. Basically, I mean, I wouldn't do a ten minute video. They're not going to watch it on TikTok. Um, this the set the shorter the video, um, the more traffic I think you'll get. So, yeah, and when you do like shorter videos, um, it's like the watch time is technically longer so it helps boost the algorithm and shorter videos tend to do a lot better on TikTok. Yeah, there's there's basically any videos for any type of niche. Like this one is an example that also did well. She got, you know, over 600,000 Yeah, let me see. Mortgage mentor and I show people how to make mortgage mentor CRM. If I had a second chance of buying my first the home, beginning. here are five things I'd do differently. For context, this is my first house. I bought it when I was 23. Loved it. And this is my current home. Live on a lake. Love it. But I still do things differently. Use a low-down payment option to get me into the home but still have money left as emergency funds. I'd house hack the hell out of it. Either I would buy a multifamily and rent out the other units or I'd have roommates. Take that extra rent money and save it up for several years. After a few years, I would rent out the house fully and use the money I earned from the rent to buy a new home and maybe do it all over again. I'm Rebecca, the mortgage mentor, and I show people how to make smart home buying choices. See you around. If I had a second chance of buying- 600,000. That's how many, how many views she got. Well, to, um, to do an ad, yes, you do pay for it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that bad. Um, it, de it depends what kind of ad you're running. If you're running an ad directly to a link and a call to action, um, it just depends how many people are, are viewing it. Um, some, I would say it's similar. I think that TikTok is, in my opinion, cheaper because you can get so much more traffic on TikTok, especially even as a new account with TikTok, you can just get so much traffic. Even as a brand new account, you can go viral in literally a day with the right content. Um, even even videos. <laughs> Come on, do the, do the first one we've seen. <laughs> but yeah. I can borrow bits. I mean, that'll be good for TikTok, though. Here, another one. But you can see, like, here's another one. And you see how she already has, like, 2.4 million likes, and she has a call to action, so she has a website in there. Um, this one, yeah, she, real estate in Canada. And you can see, you know, her... Let's see her. Yeah, right. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, for us younger people, we need a bigger picture. But yeah. what's, what got her two and a half million? Can you show us that? Let's see. <laughs> you could tell by how many views, too, because sometimes you'll see like one video that went super viral that got her started. Let's and you. Like something like or something. It, it depends on on what you want to do. Some people post three times a day. Some people post one time a week. It's literally up to you guys. If you want to go viral and you're just starting an account, you should post more. But again, it's your preference. Mm -hmm. Right. And the face, the TikTok lives too. Um, you can go live after 
here, I'll just stop with that. You can go live after you have a thousand followers on TikTok. Um, if you have a creator account, there's different accounts you can create with TikTok. There's a personal, a creator, and a business. If you have a business account, it'll allow you to put your link in it right away and you don't have to wait. If you use a creator, you get more trending sounds um, and you can do more, but you have to wait till you get that thousand followers in there. And to do the live, regardless, you have to have that thousand followers. So if you can just make a goal to build that momentum to get a thousand followers, then you can do those lives and those things to get more traffic and get a bigger following. And TikTok does pay you in a creator, but it's like very little. It's very little. Yeah, let me go back. Like, what, what would your keyword be? Like, real estate agent? Oh, okay. Uh, back where we were. Let's see. Come on. What? Do you want this one? Don't buy this? Oh, that one? Sorry. Let me go to hers. Step one, get free approval. Contact your bank or mortgage broker. Hi, I'm looking to get free approval on mortgage and I have no idea where to start with. Oh, okay. Step two, once you know what you can afford and you've chosen a realtor that you want to work with, you get to start shopping. That's the fun part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't touch it. Yeah. Right. And you could see she made it engaging because it was different scenes. Each like sentence was in a different scene. With TikTok, you can like record and pause and then you can go do something different, record and pause, and you can edit each clip to make it how you want. You can also, you know, create a video outside of TikTok and then upload it to TikTok after you edit it the way you want TikTok to. For, yeah, I mean, you could do landscape, but it's not going to perform as well. Just depends on what you want. This, this sucks to me. This sucks. I know, especially. TV is this, right? People, mm -hmm. people that do this, they get a news clip of like a car crash or plane crash. Hello, you get more if you do sideways. I know. Landscape. Which is, I'm recording live on TikTok, which I did turn it like that so I can repurpose it for like YouTube and stuff too. But for TikTok, it's, it's always upright. Did you guys have any questions about TikTok? I know I'm not covering all the details because there's so many different platforms, but I felt like those two were pretty important as real estate agents. Cool. Okay. <laughs> they do. TikTok has a ton of filters to entertain you for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their camera is good. And they have one setting where at the very end you can do like HD as well. So it like makes the quality look even better. Um, the next topic I wanted to talk to you guys about was creating like a landing page or your website. And like I said, um, most of, I think all of you should have like a KV Core website, right? And you, do you guys actively promote it? Do you know where to find it in your KV Core? You don't? <laughs> okay, so um, Cherie, she was kind of my gu guinea pig the last few months, and we were going into her KV Core, and it's really easy to find your website inside. I mean, I could show you real quick. Do you, would that be helpful to show you where to find it or no? Yeah? I, well, there's not, not everybody is. This is real estate. Yeah. Okay. So then I, I won't pull it up. Just three or four of this where they are. Right now, everybody else is. Yeah. 
Okay, the cool thing about if you have a KV Core is it'll already capture leads in there after a few clicks. So not only can they click on it and see um, updated listings, see what's available in the market, you can use that link in any of those social media sites. You can put that on your Google My Business profile so they ta it takes them right to there. It's already gonna collect that lead. You already are on the face of that. They have their, your contact information already in. When they click on listings, they see your information. So it's really good. Another option is to create your own website and buy your own domain. That could be like shereerealestate.com, um, for me, caseyjensen.com, and something that's really branded to you. And you can still integrate like the IDX, which is the, um, the listings updated regularly into uh, your own personal website. Um, what else you should have is like a professional email. Um, if you don't have one or don't know what the difference, like a regular Gmail obviously says gmail.com, a professional one would say like info at caseyjensen.com. So it would include that domain. So for Sheree, it would be contact at sherierealestate.com. Um, and it just helps you stand out and brand yourself. And then it's yours. So like KV Core, if you're not using KV Core in a month, you know, all of that kind of goes away and you have to pull from it. But if you already have your own, then you don't have to worry about that. And it's gone. Okay. Um, and another important part was creating that lead magnet too. And we're going to talk about that in the next slide. Um, when, oops. Okay, I, I'm going to ask you just to dumb it down a little bit for I'm talking about small and small here. Okay, yeah. When, what is the lead a lead magnet is basically like a page that's asking for your information in return for some type of value. So what I did with you guys today is I passed around my card that gave you access to my profile and I collected your email addresses in return for that free ebook that walks you through the slides. That's an example of a lead magnet and um, giving some type of value for free in return for that. So a lead magnet for you guys might be something like top 10 uh, things you should know before buying a home. And then if they want to get access to that, they enter in a, their name and email, and then they'll instantly get access. That's one way to do it. You can what? I mean... <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But the fun part about having a lead magnet is it helps you capture emails, which goes into an autoresponder. An autoresponder is basically something that um, instantly has a sequence of emails already set up so you don't have to go and email every single person that opts in every single time. It's already automated and generated, kind of like what's inside KV Core. Um, so Does that make sense? Well, a landing page is kind of like a website, but it's a one page website that has like, it's very direct. It asks for something in return for that email. Or not, I mean, that's a lead magnet, but a landing page could be just about anything. Like, um, kind of like Cherie's main website, it's just a landing page. It's just one page, but it has a few different options on it that a person can click on and go to. It's not a full out website with multiple different pages. I didn't, I didn't want to go really busy with people just well, yeah, and the point and not have to click through a bunch of stuff. So yeah. I was trying to be just... And as a real estate agent, I don't think you guys need that much. I think, you know, people just want to see um, listings, they want to get to know you, um, add testimonies, you know, just brand yourself. It doesn't have to be um, extravagant. A lot of people that I've seen on social media when I was browsing through different uh, social media profiles in the real estate side was mainly just link trees, which a link tree is kind of like that bio you've seen when you first click my ebook. It's just a list of different options. And I mean, that's fine too, as long as you can send them somewhere to capture emails and to get them the resources they want, like the website with the listings. Uh, 
Um, and now we're going to talk about creating marketing material. Do you guys know what Canva is? I'm, I love Canva. So Canva basically does any type of marketing material that you want it to. Um, I used Canva to create this presentation, to create that ebook. You can use it to create your business cards. You can use it to make even simple websites, like if it's a one page website um, that you just want to use as a website instead of an ebook, it allows you to generate that link. You could do flyers, presentations, logos, you name it. Um, Canva does so much and it's free. So if you're looking for a way to create the, your social media content on Facebook or you just need ideas, this is a good place to go to. You can use it for free. Yeah. Cool. Um, when another one is creating a QR code, there's a lot of different sites you can use to create QR codes. This is one I use, just qrcodemonkey.com. It's free. Um, the cool thing about this site is you can obviously enter the direct URL that you want it to go to, and then you can customize the colors. You can add in your logo to really make it kind of stand out, not just look like a typical QR code. Um, and you can use QR codes on just about anything. You can use them on your business cards. You can use them on your social media. Um, and it's just something that you could utilize a lot. Um, QR codes too. Hmm? You can make a QR code in Canva too. In, in Canva? Yeah. Oh, cool. I knew you can upload them, but I didn't know you can make yeah, them in there. I'm not surprised. Can Canva does so. Yeah, Canva does everything. so much. Yeah, I, I, I it's hard not to to be addicted to it. In resumes, I mean, you name it. Canva does so much. Um, and I wanted to kind of add this in because if I was a real estate agent, this is something that I would probably do. When we talk about video form, um, creating like a virtual tour. I, if if it were me and I was listing a home and I was putting my sign outside, and I wanted to show this home to multiple people, I would probably take a video of me walking through the house and giving as much detail as I can, and then creating a QR code link to that video to put on my flyer for that home. So people that wanna see the home could click that QR code. Not only am I branding myself and getting them to know me, but they're getting all the information instantly so they actually know if it's worth setting up a time to view that home and get to know know me and you know save the trouble if that's not the right house for them but also it makes you kind of stand out these are just ways to stand out and be a little bit different um, in today's market especially when the market slows down mm -hmm. and i just feel like it saves you guys time any way that you guys can save time um, instead of just you know booking all of these um, meetings to tour homes and stuff it, i just think it would be beneficial um, the next thing is Marketing Boost. I don't know. Has anyone heard of Marketing Boost? Okay. I didn't know about Marketing Boost until about six months ago when I was introduced to it by different affiliate marketers who also use this. Marketing Boost is a great way to um, give basically a gift for high ticket offers. For you guys, it'd be like closing a home. This is something that you could use for your buyers. What it is, is you can give a gift of like a certificate or generate a link for them to go on vacation. They can basically choose a vacation anywhere around the world. They can do a seven night stay in Hawaii and it'll pay for all the hoteling except for tax. Um, this would just be something that would be pretty beneficial to add on as that gift. Um, at the end, and it's like $37 a month to be a member. Um, they also do gift cards, restaurant vouchers, might be good on the loan side if you close something, but it's not like a high ticket offer and that you just wanna give something small as a thank you, you know, $100 voucher, and you can give one per client. So there is a limit, but um, you can give away as many as you want. So, and real estate agents were like one of the number one people that actually use Marketing Boost. Mm -hmm. So you can customize it. You can ask your client where they would like to choose and you could send it to them. You can, um, so yes, you get to choose where you want to send them or they well, choose. I mean, is it, it's not necessarily a trip though, right? I mean, is it other items as well or is it just? It's just, 
It's just like the hoteling. You don't pay for the airfare or anything, the hotel part of the trip or the restaurants or the um, gift cards to different things. Does that make sense? Maybe. I, I haven't personally used it um, on me, but you there there's just so many options and I wanted to show this because real estate agents are using this and they are one of the number ones and loan officers too were on the list. I haven't used it yet, but I'm going to. I mean, I just think I just think it would be a great thing to be known as a realtor that sends people on vacations. Like I just think not only does that sound cool, but it's just extra and it only costs you 37 well $37 a month and you can give it out as much as you want. I, 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 you're going you, I could send you in f to Hawaii with like no cost to you you would just pay for the tax I know it sounds weird I've asked a lot of questions about how they make it work but they make it work from um, those unbooked rooms and stuff and what I did test because I didn't want to I was like this sounds kind of scammy and it kind of does, but but um, I had a another affiliate marketer send it to me just so I can look into it as if I were the client booking, and it had a ton of availability. Like I chose Florida, um, it, I think it was like Miami, Florida, and I I wanted to see if it actually had like good dates available, and it was um, available, and yeah, it had every day every month. Mm -hmm. Probably, I, I don't, I don't know, but it had a ton of availability. So I just think it's, if it's something um, worth looking into for you guys, I think it would be you're definitely an addition. You, we're not paying the taxes. You're paying a monthly fee for t to have marketing boost to give to your clients. When clients book, their hoteling is free. The only thing they have to pay for is the tax. That's why it doesn't say free. They're complimentary on the top because they have to pay the tax on it. I actually had a friend that went on a trip, and I, she, she, um, I don't remember who sent it to her, mm -hmm. and she got the similar thing, and she TikToked the whole event from the beginning of her getting to the airport, packing everything, and mm -hmm. it, what a great advertisement that is. I, just, I think so too. Even if the person, for whatever reason, doesn't want to use it, I just think it's a nice incentive to add to it or use as like a main offer. So what, what are you getting for your monthly fee? What am I getting? You're getting the ability to use this over and over again to send, I mean, this is like thousands of dollars worth of hoteling that you get to give to whatever client you want. So it's just giving you access? It's giving you access to generate the certificates to give to people uh, and the gift cards. Thing, right? It's not a timeshare thing, no. Um, nope, it's nothing like that. It's n nothing boring. It's just a 37. You don't pay for anything else. Marketing Boost does all the rest. They enter their hoteling, all of that into here, and then they just automatically have them pay for the tax. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you go to the, e huh? Users. Users. Uh, I don't. I don't know. They might have an option for multiple users. I haven't tried that, but I know that you, as an individual, can send as many people as you want um, to any of the locations, but you can only use it once per client. So if you send them once and you close another deal, you can't use the same vacation voucher. Um, Again, for that client. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can? Are you asking? Yeah, did you like it? Uh, yes and no. I mean, some people didn't want to pay the taxes. And that's understandable. I, that's why I just I wanted to show it because I just think it, it would be a cool add on. Yeah, you know? it's only 37 bucks. Mm -hmm, and you can use it as much so, as you want. I am. I booked it. I didn't book the actual trip yet, but I did get the voucher. So it was like, I think it was like a four night stay or something. I was like, Robert okay. Had a, um, be on the lookout for him. We had one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I heard you talking about him. <laughs> All right, I'll look out for the worms. Bring salt with the worms. <laughs> He's on a roll. Um, anyway, so the resources that we talked about today are all in the ebook that I sent out.
and links to each one if you're interested um, in getting started. I also added the doc card if you like that and you want to get one for yourself or look into it, it's there as well. And then if you guys need any additional support as you get started implementing anything that we talked about today, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you guys need help implementing anything that we learned, getting that presence, um, I do do a six-week course where we would do where we would meet once a week for about 30 to 45 minutes and also stay in contact throughout the week, just walking you through the steps that we talked about today and helping you just brand yourself and get an online presence. But yeah. 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 So, you know, one of the big things I've been seeing a lot of lately is like you have that schedule now. Mm -hmm. A lot of people put that on like their email signatures and stuff like that or they just schedule an appointment. Yeah. Go to that ebook I sent and you can schedule a consultation. It's an app called Calendly. There's a free version. Um, there's different apps like it too. I like Calendly um, and it'll integrate right to your calendar and allow people to book. Um, this one will instantly book a Zoom session so you can integrate a lot of different things with it. For, for working with me? Yes, there's a cost, and um, it might change depending on the person's needs, but for a six-week course, I do charge $500 to work with me for six weeks. Is there any other questions? I have yeah. a question about the marketplace. Yes. So you pay, like, for one client, you pay, like, 37 a month, average 70 for one client, and then that's for another client? No, it, it's as many clients as you have. You can use it as many times. Mm-hmm. Would you yeah. Like out for the office share <laughs> I don't know about the office. Maybe I'll have to look into that. But I, as of now, I just know it's Tampa, per person. You can have teams mm -hmm. with, within Tampa. Yeah, you can have the team meets. Like Spokio log in yet to do background checks. So I pay like forty bucks a month. We all want to use it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Any other That's questions? I know that was a lot that we went over. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a good idea of different things that I felt might benefit you guys as real estate agents. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah.